Most people, half of what they thought today is the same things they thought yesterday about themselves, about their life, about the business. That's why most people's lives don't change very much. But if you wake up and you start realizing, I'm living in a home, an emotional home I don't want, you can change it. See, because everybody's got it. If you got a billion dollars, check this out. If you had a billion dollars, but the habitual emotions you go back to are frustrated, pissed off, then your life is called frustrated and pissed off. It doesn't matter how much money you have. Write this down, please. The quality of my life is the quality of my habitual emotions. The quality of my entire life is nothing but the quality of my habitual emotions. Whatever habits of emotion, wherever my emotional home is, I will find a way to get back there. And until I change that, I'm gonna have a problem. How many of you see people in some part of the world in my country, for example, you'll see this in the middle of America where there's certain places that have cyclones all the time. Or maybe down in New Orleans or places where every few years you get a huge storm that wipes out everybody right on the coast there. But then two years later, it happens again. They rebuild, it happens again. How many have ever thought to yourself, why don't these people move? Why don't they move, guys? because it's what their condition, they call that home. I don't want to leave my home, it's what I know. It's easy to see when it's somebody else and it's physical. It's harder to see when it's yourself and it's emotional. Most people suffer even when they're successful. Listen, if you're successful and you're not fulfilled, that's the ultimate failure. If you got people that love you and you're not feeling joyous and alive, something's wrong. And you know what it is? You got an old home you're used to. Maybe the home you're used to is not a very happy home. It's a, a home of worry, a home of frustration, a home of anger, a home of feeling everything is unjust. And so you find a way to get back home using whatever the environment you can use. How many of you know somebody who's always pissed off about something? How many of you know somebody who is always worried? How many of you know someone who's not really funny? As they think they are, <laughs> and they crack themselves up telling stupid jokes. How many know someone like this who cracks themselves up and they laugh so much that even though it's not funny, you find yourself laughing too? These people have different emotional homes. Some people's home is anger. They'll always find something to be angry about. It's what they're used to. It's their conditioning. So even when the storm comes and messes up their life, they go right back to that same shit. Wouldn't it be nice to upgrade your home? your emotional home where you live? What if you could live every day with the vast majority of the emotions you had were joy and gratitude and love and appreciation, even in the middle of COVID, even when somebody does something unjust, compassion, playfulness. What would that feel like if you were in those states every day, 90, 95% of the time when you work, you got out of it quick. You can make that change this weekend and I'm not exaggerating an ounce. I'm not saying you're gonna be perfect and never have a negative feeling because negative feelings are sometimes a signal to make us change. But most people have a negative feeling and they just hang on to it and keep living with it and find other things to be negative about. They will never give you what you want. The money won't do it. The acknowledgement of others won't do it. Everything you think will do it will not do it. Only one thing will do it. You drawing a line in the sand and making the most important decision of your life that you're gonna live in a beautiful state no matter what because life is too short to suffer. We have a choice. Listen to me. Pain is sometimes part of life, but suffering is a choice. But for most of us, it's not a choice because we have the habit of suffering, being stressed, being worried, being frustrated, being pissed off. And because we're wired that way, that's the muscle we built. But if we rebuild our home here so it's even more magnificent, then you can have the life that you desire and deserve. And you can do it in one weekend, only if you give your all and push enough energy out while you're doing it, while you're learning. Your growth is the only limit to your happiness. If you're not happy, you're not growing in some area. And usually it's a place where you're blaming, you're pointing the finger. I don't care if it's government, don't get me wrong. People can be unfair, unjust, that's for sure happens. But you can't control that. You can't make it not happen. What you have to do is become stronger than any of it so you're free. Freedom comes from growth. Freedom does not come from control. Because control is an illusion. You can't control everybody. No matter how hard you try, you can't control what they think or feel. And not everybody's going to be fair and just. And you 
my dear friends, and I have not always been fair and just. Whether we admit it or not, it's just the nature of being a being, a human being. But we can make the largest pattern fair and just and loving and powerful and serving and growing until it becomes the dominant thing inside you. And then you experience life as being great, not you're great. Life's great because you're living a great path. And so you're not in the place of being overweight because you lost your job. So stop the blame. Blame is not a strategy for a meaningful life. Blame is not a strategy for greatness. So you've got to resolve that, number one. And then you, your question was, what's the one thing to focus on if you only focus on one? I think it's smart to focus on one thing primarily. Focus on too many can be overwhelming. Other people, it's, it's good to focus on multiple things. It depends on your personality. So I wouldn't presuppose. But then the answer would be whichever thing you're most desirous of changing. Whatever thing is giving you the most pain. So if it's your relationship, I'd go full force on that. Now, in the world we're in today, you know, you don't usually have the, the privilege of going, okay, I want to work on just being happy. Well, I can train you to be happy while hell's breaking loose. You can sit in this chair and be totally euphoric. But if you do that in a Western culture, people come and take your furniture, right? So you probably have to work on both your business or financial side and some personal side. I would be working on both. And to me, the way to attack that, if you're not sure which area is to start with the body. And I know you can relate to this, Lewis, because you and I both share this in common. It's like, I always teach physiology first, as you well know. If you change the body, you'll change the emotions. If you change the emotions, you'll change your decisions, you'll change the quality of your life. Because the quality of your life is your emotions. It's not what you get. You can have a billion dollars and commit suicide. People have done it, right? You can have beautiful relationships and commit suicide. You can have people loving you and be sad all the time. Our pattern of emotion is our home. And you have to upgrade your home. You have to train it. And one way to train it is the emotion comes from the way you move, the way you breathe, the way you speak. So if I said to your listeners, uh, there's a depressed person behind the curtain over here and I'll give $100,000 to their favorite charity if they had to describe their body, their posture, and they're depressed. And all those physical characteristics change your biochemistry towards this feeling of being depressed. And in a depressed state, you won't do anything. When I used to be depressed, and I don't get it anymore. I just took it out of my life. I even took the language of it out of my life because the words you create, create a biochemical response. But when I did that decades ago, because I was like having those thoughts like, is there a reason to still be here? That kind of crazy shit you had. I got out of it by using anger originally. I'd much like, sometimes if somebody's really sad or depressed, I'll make them angry. Be like, what's he doing to make them angry? Because angry is much more resourceful than depressed. From anger, I can get you the laughter. I can get you know, taking action. I, so, and then gradually I got where I didn't need anger. It was about growth. It was about contribution. It was about meaning. So there's like stages to go through. But to answer your question, they should work on both their business side of their life and personal, one of each. And in order for either one of those to work, you need to be in a strong emotional state. And if you start with your body, like you know, I start every morning in my cold water, start every morning with my workout. I start every morning like feeding my mind, right? So there's certain things you gotta do physically so you're strong enough to remember the truth. Because remember, fear is physical. You feel it in your throat or your gut. So is courage. Courage doesn't mean you're not afraid. It just means you're strong enough you push through in spite of the fear, right? And courage feels different in the body. So when you go lift or you go for a sprint or a strong run or you jump in that freezing water, when you push your mind to go beyond what's comfortable, you feel a strength inside you and that strength will help you to change your body, your emotions, your relationships, whatever. But then the other thing I gotta say is model someone who's successful. Don't just do this sh by trial and error. Like find somebody who has what you want Ideally, maybe more than one person, two or three, and figure out what are they doing different than you in their relationship? What do they believe different than you about relationship? Their body, what are they doing different? They're not lucky. They're doing things differently. You might be slightly biochemically different, but there's patterns there that you can see. And so instead of learning by trial and error, which can take decades, you may never learn, Jim Rohn taught me success leaves clues, man. Find someone's got what you want, study what they do, every aspect of it, and then add yourself to it. And that's the pathway to speed of transformation.